Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and to check out the questions in the description. Today we're going to be looking at the election of 1800. The election of 1800 um, is, is really a significant election, and really a lot of historians consider it to be the first modern presidential election. Um, not necessarily because it's the first time we have two different parties, because we do have two different parties running against each other here, but because this is really the first election where we see uh, the candidates, I guess you could say, throwing mud at each other or, you know, kind of running uh, negative campaigns against each other. So in this election, of course, we have uh, Thomas Jefferson running for the Democratic Republicans. He was the uh, challenger. And then we have the incumbent, second president of the United States, John Adams, who was running on the uh, Federalist ticket. Now, one interesting thing here to consider is, you know, these these guys had run against each other before in 1796, but at that time in the Constitution, uh, the, whoever finished second in the election would end up being the vice president. So Thomas Jefferson had spent the last four years serving as John Adams' vice president, even though they had extremely different views about how the government was supposed to run. So that was a little awkward for everybody. So let's look a little bit here at what happens during this election. So. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, you know, in the Constitution, they didn't say anything about political parties. But, you know, by the time of 1796, we had had political parties that had formed. The Federalists that believed in a strong central government, the Democratic Republicans who were a little bit, you know, more laid back and said that, you know, the state should maybe have more power. But let's look at, like, you know, what was some of the mud that they were actually throwing at each other here uh, in this election. So um, for the Federalists or for John Adams, he was attacking Thomas Jefferson on a couple different points. One big, big point was uh, Thomas Jefferson's religious beliefs. Uh, Adams accused Jefferson of being an unchristian deist. And when they say a deist, a deist is basically somebody that believes, yes, there is a God, but that God basically created everything and then left and, and kind of just, you know, was out is that it was out of the picture that's basically what uh thomas jefferson believed in all right and there were a lot of people in the country that did not agree with that and so uh you know of course adams attacked jefferson on that also we had the french revolution that we had just you know it was in the midst of taking place and uh Jefferson had spent a lot of time in France as a as a diplomat and so he really liked a lot of french ideas and so uh adams was attacking jefferson saying he's very pro uh pro French Revolution and that there's going to be, you know, chaos here in the United States if we allow Jefferson to become president. On the other side, uh, Thomas Jefferson was attacking John Adams basically on, you know, his Federalist ideals, on his idea that the central, the federal government should be in control. And, you know, especially on, you know, the whole growth of the U.S. military at this time, uh, especially, you know, the growth of the Navy. Remember during the XYZ affair, uh, the Navy had been expanded and there had been this unofficial war with France that had begun. And then also Jefferson was attacking John Adams, of course, because of the Alien and Sedition Acts, which were a violation of the First Amendment, uh, basically, you know, limiting how much people could say about the government. Uh, and and everything. All right. Now, I guess when you, when you think about them throwing mud at each other, of course, there weren't campaign ads at this time, the way that we think of campaign ads today being on TV or on the Internet. Um, basically, what they did was they wrote letters to newspapers and they would do a lot of writing and, and send out their message that way was really how they would attack each other. All right. But um one interesting thing, too, about this election is this is the first time that we see running mates being uh, chosen. So to try to avoid the whole thing of having a vice president that was of the opposite party, each party chose a running mate. So for Jefferson, he chose another Democratic Republican, Aaron Burr, to be his running mate, whereas John Adams had a guy named Charles uh, Pickney, who was his running mate. And the hope was in the Electoral College is that the running mate would get second the second number of votes, and so then they would become the, uh, the vice president. All right, so here's how the election broke down. All right, so the way that this broke down is that Jefferson narrowly won 73 electoral votes to 65. And what's kind of cool here to look at is actually Jefferson and Aaron Burr, his running mate, tied for the presidential election. Um, the, on the ticket, it didn't necessarily say who you're voting for. Are you voting for this guy for president or are you voting for him for vice president? So actually they tied. So the election had to be decided in the House of Representatives. And of course, during this election too, the Democratic Republicans swept in and won all of the, uh, or, or swept in and took control of the House of Representatives. But before they could come in and be sworn in, the Federalists were going to decide this election. And so one of the key people that really you know decided this election was uh, Alexander Hamilton. All right, so Alexander Hamilton was a Federalist 
Federalist Party leader. He helped to sway the vote towards Jefferson because he saw Jefferson as being the lesser of two evils. Now, this might come back to haunt him later because, of course, it's going to be Aaron Burr that eventually will kill uh, Alexander Hamilton. But, you know, that's a whole other story uh, to get into. But two big significant things that come out of this, uh, this election. It is, you know, the first time we see a peaceful transition of power. So uh, in- instead of it being a big fight of, you know, a new party taking over, we see the democratic process working here because it's a peaceful transfer of power to the other party. Um, and then also it would be the last time that we see a federalist president. Technically, George Washington, you kind of consider basically consider him to be a federalist because he believed in a strong central government. All right. So hopefully you learned something there and I'll talk to you later. Thanks. <laughs>